Jeff, I have an apology to make. You do have an apology to make. About maybe 12, 18 months ago, probably You at know this what, Jake, point. let me tell the story. Okay. Okay, this is what happened. We were looking to renovate this beautiful space that we're in right now. And I went to my buddy, Jake, expert of all experts, church front glory. And I said, Jake, let me tell you about what we're doing here at Wellspring. Told him about the whole project and he said, but wait, what are you guys doing with video? Well, you know, we're not the church to have these like big pedestals with cameras on top of them, with people running the cameras every Sunday, but we want to have a good looking, robust live stream. So I think I'm going to go with a PTZ option. And let me just tell you guys, if you've never seen Jake Gosselin of Church Front hulk out, it happened. I was upset. I was, was disappointed. Upset. I think he went all the way of, of asking me how I could even consider wasting donor money by I, buying PTZ cameras. I think, I did, did you say that? I did. PTZs are notorious for looking like security camera footage, small sensors, grainy, dark, no depth of field, bad color. That's why I never like PTZ cameras. But Jeff, I've changed my mind. This is the Canon CRN500. This camera is the reason why I changed my mind about PTZ cameras for churches. In this video, you'll learn why. First, we'll talk about the technical specifications of the camera that result in this beautiful image. Then I'm gonna walk you through the multi-camera setup we've been using at South Fellowship Church using four of these PTZ cameras. Finally, we're gonna head on over back to Wellspring Church with my friend Jeff. He is gonna share what it's been like using these cameras for over one year. Let's dive into the specs of the CRN 500. It contains a Canon one inch 4K UHD CMOS sensor. What's the big deal about a bigger sensor? Well, it has larger photo sites that capture more light, meaning there's less noise, especially in low light situations. This camera also uses oversampling HD processing, taking full advantage of the 4K sensor to generate stunning full HD video. It has a 15 times optical zoom lens with a built-in ND filter and optical stabilization. This lens and sensor combination means you get a cinematic depth of field, especially when you zoom in on your subject. Finally, this camera also has Canon's dual pixel autofocus with face tracking, making it incredibly easy to capture sharp images. Here's a sample of me walking into frame and putting that autofocus to the test. The platform where I'm standing is about 60 feet away from the camera at the back of the room. Here's what it looks like when the camera zoomed all the way out. You've got a really nice wide perspective. Here it is zoomed all the way in. The footage you see now is 1080p at 2997. The video signal is sent out of the SDI port on the back of the camera to our video switcher and then recorded locally with a HyperDeck in the ProRes 422 format. This is the Canon CRN300. It's the little brother to the CRN500. It has most of the same features, the primary difference being a smaller image sensor. It has a one over 2.3 inch CMOS sensor with a 20 times optical zoom, meaning it can reach farther than the N500, but it is not as good in low light because of that smaller sensor. Let's compare the difference. Here's a tight shot of me on the N500 that has a one inch sensor at a 15 times zoom. Here's a tight shot of me on the N300 with the smaller 1 over 2.3 inch sensor at a 20 time zoom. Finally, this is the Canon RC IP100 touchscreen PTZ joystick controller. It can control the pan, tilt, zoom, exposure, and other settings of up to 100 cameras. The joystick is very accurate and responsive. With enough practice, you can make one camera operator on this controller look like you have four or five camera operators, depending on how many cameras you have within your setup. You can easily recall position and exposure presets for each camera, or you can even use the cool trace feature to pre-program precise movements for each camera. Our setup process for using these cameras at South Fellowship was quite simple. Each camera needed power, a network connection, and an SDI video connection to our switcher. The network port on the back of the cameras does have PoE or power over ethernet, so I did not need to use the included power supplies. It got power from the ethernet cable. Keep in mind, you have to have PoE compatible switches to make this possible. The next thing we did is I talked to Aaron about what IP addresses were available on our local area network that I could assign to these cameras. It's very important to 
have IP addresses that you can dedicate to each one of these cameras and your controller because for all the cameras, I'd recommend using the manual IP option. It's gonna ensure that every time you turn on and off your system, when you turn it back on again, you're going to have those cameras assigned properly to your controller with the right IP address. So it's important to get the IT right. Once the cameras had power, network, and video connections, I went ahead and downloaded the camera search tool on our video control computer that has a hardwire connection to the same network. Upon opening the camera search tool app, I found all four PTZ cameras on the network. By default, they are all automatically assigned an IP address, but this is where I can select the IP address to open up the camera settings in a web browser to start configuring the camera to my liking. First, I set up a manual IP address and then I let the camera reboot to apply that change. Next, using the new IP address, I can navigate back to the camera settings in the browser to change the frame rate frequency to 29.97 and resolution to 1080p so that now it's compatible with our video switcher and the camera shows up in our multi-view. Next, I'm able to start creating exposure and position presets for the camera using the web browser control app. I find it easiest to use the web browser and a laptop to adjust the position, exposure, and saving presets because my computer monitor becomes a great reference monitor to see what the camera is seeing. Then later on, when I register the camera in the RC IP100 controller, it's much easier to call up those presets and do on the fly movements with the controller joystick and zoom toggle. Registering the camera with the controller is easy. First, I wanted to make sure that I knew all my naming assignments for the various cameras, like camera one, camera two, camera three, and I know which camera is which. I want the numbering of the cameras and the controller to actually be consistent with the same number and naming scheme we have uh, with the cameras in our video switcher. So then when we look at the multi-view and I see camera one, I know on my PTZ controller, that's the same camera one. So on the controller, I simply click on the settings button, then network, camera registration, and then on the manual IP. Under the camera group one, I select camera one and I assign the manual IP address I registered earlier for the camera. It also gave me peace of mind to know that I could secure the control of these cameras on the network with unique usernames and passwords to make sure that nobody maliciously takes over a camera even if they know the IP address because theoretically anybody on that network could pull up the IP address in a browser and then they could control the camera if they have the password. So I went ahead and I repeated this process for every single camera. Another cool feature mentioning about these cameras is that it has built-in NDI compatibility. Maybe you'd like to do all of your video switching and streaming in a simple setup using ProPresenter. Well, within seconds, I was able to go into the settings on the camera in the web browser and I enabled the NDI feature. And then I went over to ProPresenter running on a computer that's also on the same local area network. I made sure Wi-Fi was off because you don't want NDI to be going over Wi-Fi. It could be kind of laggy and glitchy. Make sure it's just on a hardwired network. I went into ProPresenter, I went to Preferences, I went to Inputs, and then I added a video input. And then from the list of devices to choose from, voila, a new NDI device popped up for each of these cameras. As you can see, these PTZ cameras easily integrate with a large hardware-based streaming system or a simple software application like ProPresenter. Now I wanna talk a little bit more about the camera plot that we're currently using at South Fellowship and how I've arranged these different cameras. Canon sent me two CRN500s with the bigger sensor and two CRN300s with the smaller sensor. They also sent me a Canon C70 in order to produce this YouTube video and and they wanted to show me how well the color matched between the C70 cinema camera and these PTZ cameras. Here is a look at the camera plot. Camera one is a CRN500 placed at the back of the room, slightly off center from the stage. This is our main follow camera. Camera two is a CRN300 placed at the side of our tech booth, which is also in the back of the room. This shot gives us a variety of angles, including a great wide shot of the entire room and tighter side shots of the stage. Camera three is a Canon C70 cinema camera that gets a nice stationary shot from the side of stage left. I usually have it framed in on our worship leaders. And despite being a cinema camera, a completely different model than these PTZs, it blends perfectly with them because they all use the same Canon color science and 
and they all are using the Rec. 709 LUT. Camera 4 is another CRN300 with a smaller sensor placed on the floor in front of the stage right, and it gets a great close-up shot of our drummer and bass player or a wide shot of both of them together. Finally, Camera 5 is the other CRN500 placed in front of stage left for close-up shots of the piano and electric guitarist. As I already mentioned, our video switcher is a Blackmagic ATEM running at 1080p and 2997 frames per second. We are streaming at that same frame rate and resolution to our church website, YouTube channel, and Facebook page using a Boxcaster Pro encoder, which uses H.265 encoding, maintaining high fidelity audio and video for our online viewers. I want to emphasize the importance of having a high quality encoder if you're going to invest in quality professional cameras like these Canon PTZs. You also want to make sure you have adequate stage lighting. Even though these are high-end cameras, they still need sufficient light for your subjects. So then you don't have to crank the gain or ISO on these cameras and it gets all noisy and grainy. We've used this setup now with five Canon cameras and the controller for over a month now and our team could not be happier with the results and you can look at our live stream for yourself we've been able to borrow these cameras at south fellowship from late august 2022 to the end of october 2022 so if you're watching our stream during that time frame those are the cameras you're seeing in our worship center there's no noise or even hardly any noise on the smaller camera sensors, even in the darkest parts of the image. The skin tones, of course, look great because it has the amazing Canon color science. And I did make sure to spend some time dialing in all the cameras to the same in the proper white balance so the skin tones look natural. I love having the bokeh effect with these PTZ cameras. I never thought that was possible with PTZ cameras until I tried these ones, where we're able to zoom in tighter on a subject and you actually have that effect where the background gets blurred out. The autofocus is very quick to find faces with that face detection feature and lock it into focus. The only time it struggles is if there's like a complete blackout with lighting, but that's gonna happen with any camera with autofocus. It needs light to work. I was able to teach our volunteer video directors within minutes how to operate these cameras, how to change the exposure if we need to, how to save presets. It's all very intuitive with a controller. During rehearsal, our volunteer video directors take their time dialing in all of the presets for the various cameras so that they, they have all the tweaks made for different band members. Someone might be taller or in different location on stage. We can tweak the presets, save them. Then during the service, they're calling up the different presets and they're switching the camera angles with the ATEM. We have a stream deck right next to the Canon controller, so it's very easy for one person to control the cameras and switch the camera angles simultaneously. Maybe in an ideal world, if we had another volunteer for that position, we could separate those two roles and a person could be more creative with their attention on the PTZ cameras while the other person can focus on switching the angles. I spent two Sundays in that role myself just to get a great feel for the cameras and what it's like switching at the same time, and I had a blast. My favorite technique would be to actually pan one of the PTZ cameras uh, before cutting to it, so then I cut to it mid-motion. It really adds some nice energy and motion to the shot, and then I'd cut away to a different angle. And I would try this out with different cameras, maybe the camera two, which was in the back of the room, to get a nice pan across the stage. Sometimes I would use camera uh, four or five to pan across the drummer and bassist or my pianist and my guitar players. We also used our primary camera to follow our pastor during the sermon. Since you can adjust the PTZ joystick speed for panning and tilting and zooming, it's easy to follow someone as if you're operating a full camera tripod setup, but you're doing it all on this little joystick. So far, after more than a month of using these cameras week in and week out and really just honing our own skills of how to make the most of this tool, I could not be happier with the results we've been getting. Let's head on back over to my friend Jeff's church over at Wellspring up the road to get a closer look of how their experience has been using these cameras for over a year. Let's go ahead and walk through kind of how you've placed your cameras. So what you're looking at right now here is our kind of one moving camera. So obviously we've got it on a tripod, plugs into a floor box. We've got SDI and network in all of our floor boxes all over the stage. So any given Sunday, you'll see this in a different spot. Sometimes it's here, sometimes it's over on that side, sometimes it's back behind the drums. Um, and that just allows us to kind of have one unique 
perspective on our live stream that's moving around while our other three cameras are fixed. So if you take a look out this way, uh, there's one camera here on the right wall, one camera over here on the left wall, and then there's one camera in the very back by the uh, sound booth, and those never move um, from their location. So the way that we placed them was we really just wanted to be able to capture anything that's going on on this stage. Um, if you look at our baptismal over here, um, the camera on stage right side hits the baptismal perfectly. So this was a, something we really wanted to have a good shot of when we're baptizing folks. What's cool about that is uh, we actually take that feed from that camera and put it up on the LED wall when we're baptizing somebody. So the whole room gets to be in on the baptism experience. Even if you're really far away in the back seats, you get to see it up close. So we get a crystal clear image from that camera, the baptismal. Um, this camera kind of does the same. It crosses and gets everything on this side of the stage. And then we've got our main straight on shot dead center in the back. So you guys have a really nice clean setup here with this. Yeah, so we're, we're going straight SDI out, um, which gets patched in downstairs and directly into our video router and then into our video switcher. And then this network cable is just directly tied into our tech LAN network. In every floor box, um, we've got video ports, we've got network ports, and we've got microphone XLR jacks. All right, now we're off to the control room so you guys can see how the IO works at the rack down here and then how we are controlling the camera. So here we are in the server room with the rack that contains all of the networking IO as well as the video. On the back of the cameras, when we saw those SDI cables and networking cables, they are coming down here. So they've got the ATEM uh, 2ME Production Studio 4K as their primary switcher. And then out here in their control room, they have the control panel for that switcher right here. So that's what's cutting to the various camera angles. From this space, we run all of our pro presenter from here. We run our video switching from here and we run our camera movement from here. The way we built the rig is that cameras and video switching can be run by one body, although we prefer it to be two people that are sitting down here, one person doing the switching, one person doing the camera operating. Do you have the person switching is just calling out like what they're gonna cut to, like to the person next to them who's directing the cameras? Like what's the, what's that actually look and sound like? Yeah, so we kind of put the person that's sitting at the video switcher as the chief boss down here. And that person is letting the camera operator know what's coming next. Uh, that person is letting the pro presenter operator know what's coming next. So oftentimes it's like um, this person will be sitting here and saying, oh, there's a scripture reading coming up in about a minute at the end of this next song. And so then the camera operator will take camera three and get it just positioned at the scripture reading um, way ahead of time. And so then camera three just sits there. They can still move around with the other cameras for the end of the song. And then we get to scripture reading. Video switcher person says, all right, I'm going to camera three for the scripture reading. And then they just take it. And then just like what I've been using at South Fellowship, they've got the RC IP100 controller. Super pleased with this controller. I've used a couple of different PTZ controllers over the years, and this one is by far the most robust and capable in terms of um, being able to swing cameras around at different speeds, pull up presets at different speeds. There's some great hot buttons over here on the side that you can assign to do whatever you want them to do. So for example, um, if you have a very different lighting set. We have all of our settings, um, exposure, white balance, everything like that on manual mode on these cameras. So we set it and then we have to set it to something else if the room changes. For us, the way that that manifests is every Sunday we have similar lighting on the spot for the preacher, kind of like what you were saying, Jake, like just get your lighting right and then you're good. On very rare occasions, we'll be doing a service like on a Good Friday or a Ash Wednesday or Monday, Thursday, where the lighting like dramatically changes and we want it like dark, dark, and then light, and then dark again. And so what the way that we compensate for that in this system is in the camera presets, you can choose if you want them to, the, you want the preset to store your different settings with exposure and white balance and all of that. So for those services, as we move through our presets on the camera, we'll have like a set of presets that are for the dark mode and a set of presets that are for the light mode. And the second we hit the preset for the light mode, it'll actually flip all those settings on the camera and make it look just as good, but quickly in like a preset fashion, as opposed to having to go in and, you know, manually adjust all those settings for a change in the middle of a service. So what you're seeing here um, is if I go from preset four to preset three, it's gonna be real zippy. It's gonna do that as fast as it can do it because it's at a speed level of 100%. So the camera's saying, get from this point to this point as fast as you can. But with this programmable user button right here, I can click this 
And now it's changed it to a time-based transition of 99 seconds. So now when I hit preset three, you can see that back camera now is just barely crawling. And it's gonna take 99 seconds to get from point A to point B. Can you start altering other cameras right Absolutely. now too? Absolutely, so right. I can now go to camera three and I can change that and have that go oh, right yeah. there. And that starts moving. And if I want that to go quickly, I can change that to speed level 100. And you can see now it starts to buzz around quick while the other camera is still doing its movement. And so I can have multiple cameras doing these beautiful slow pans from one place to the other that really emulate somebody actually being on the camera. And it just keeps going. I mean, camera one still has another minute of that transition left. So I can call, call back to that whenever I need to. So it's just smooth. I mean, the way the cameras roll in that really long transition, it's, it's actually a cool, a cool way to use this gear. This screen is showing you what's going out to the live stream. This screen is showing you what's going up to the LED wall. So right now they're both getting that stained glass image. But if I wanted to send a live camera to uh, the live stream and I wanted it to be camera one, I can press ME1 and I can put camera one right there. Camera one is now going out to the live stream. If I hit this ME2 button and I wanna give the people in the sanctuary this close up view of the baptismal, then I go over here to ME2, I press camera three and I take that. And now you can see camera three is what's being sent to the LED wall and you can actually see it in the room. It's what's live on the wall. So I can like back that off and in the room, you get the live video. We don't use that very often. We're not a live video kind of church in the room. The screen's honestly like too big to run iMag behind the sermon. It just is like crazy large, um, but it works really well for baptisms when, when people wanna feel like they're connected to the person in the water. Jeff, thank you so much. Glad to hear you're having a great experience with these cameras that I might have warned you not to get, but I was totally wrong. I just hope that the next time I'm wrong about something, which is few and far between, <laughs> Uh, but the next time I'm wrong about something, I hope I handle it with the humility and grace that Jake, you have handled this very awkward situation with. There you have it. I've officially changed my mind about PTZ cameras for church live streaming. All thanks to the Canon CRN 500 and 300 cameras. My personal preference would be to build a system that has all N500s so that every camera angle has a beautiful image because of that one inch sensor. But I understand sometimes we are limited by budget. Nevertheless, the N300 still exceeded my expectations. So long as your lighting and exposure is set up properly, you're going to be happy with the image that this little brother camera can also produce with that smaller one over 2.3 inch sensor. A big thanks to Canon for for sponsoring this video and allowing us to borrow these cameras for a few months. We finally have a PTZ camera solution for churches that doesn't sacrifice so much of the video quality that we all want. And that's why I'm thrilled to recommend these cameras to churches out there. Whether you're a small church, maybe you only need one or two of these cameras, you could go with the uh, N300 model, or if you're a larger scale production that you're really shooting for the best results possible, you could go for the N500. Check out the links below this video to learn more about this product. There's so many specs and features that you can learn about on Canon's website. So go check it out yourself. Thanks for watching. Hit that like button if you found this video helpful. Subscribe to the channel for more worship and tech tips, and we'll see you next time.